So uh, never would try it serverless or try to build something with it. Okay. So just a bit about me. Uh, so I'm Diogo. Uh, I, I work at CPX, uh, Zona, Paradox, Zona Paradoxal. Uh, most of the time I'm working with serverless and with uh, serverless backend applications. Most of it uh, Node.js using JavaScript or TypeScript. Most of it TypeScript. Uh, on my free time, you can find me swimming on pools here in Lisbon or some waters here nearby. So what is serverless architectures? And this is a new concept that started around 2012, but got a bit more momentum when AWS re released uh, AWS Lambdas around 2014. Uh, they started using this kind of Lambdas to execute the code, the company's code, for specific uh, things that didn't need a service to be always running and listening. So started to hear a bit uh, function as a service with this, uh, this kind of architecture or backend as a service where we have uh, our code that will use third party uh, services to, to run. This, this kind of code, it's always triggered by events and it's not never running. It's not running all the time like the conventional servers. Uh, so to this to happen, it needs to happen an HTTP event and when that happens, our code is going to be executed. If there's a queue that we are, we are configured to listen, uh, when that message receive, uh, happens, we'll just pop up our code. Or if we have something more complex like, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, Kinesis, like it's a superset of uh, Kafka streams that's from AWS. It uh, reaches some number of uh, information there. We'll read that information. So this doesn't mean that we don't have servers to run our code. It, it will, everything is going to be run on an actually server, but it's not maintained by us. It's not managed by us. We don't need to uh, have people directly managing and scaling when this happens. It's going to be outsourced to some cloud, perform, cloud providers doesn't mean that we don't need DevOps and people and people to manage the rest of our stuff. The rest needs to be managed because our database are tools that we'll need to use. So DevOps, so serverless doesn't mean you don't need DevOps. It just means that might get easier to get things started. So cloud providers that are there with serverless. Uh, some of them are AWS, uh, Google Cloud Functions, Azure, and here you can select, uh, uh, you will select the, the cloud provider that gives us the needs that you want. You will select according to the runtimes that you want to, to, to do your code. You mainly, most of them use Node.js, so you have available Node.js on all of them. Uh, Java is present in most of all of them. Uh, I think Python is on some of them too. But there are some cloud providers that actually use uh, Docker to instantiate the containers and run your code. So that makes you uh, the freedom to choose what language that you can use. So, okay, you have your code, you, have, you select your language, how you can you deploy? You can use your provider console, so like AWS console or Google Cloud console to, to actually uh, make your code there or, and deploy it. You can use their CLI or you can rely on other tools to do it. For example, Sparta, that's a specific for Go language uh, for AWS. Apex, it's also for AWS. CloudJS, it's for AWS. Zappa, it's for AWS. I think it's for Python. And you have serverless framework uh, where you can deploy on all of this one's cloud providers. So we are going to talk a bit more about serverless framework. That's the, the one that we are going to show, and how can you install it? So serverless framework, it's an uh, NPM package. You can install it like a normal package and use it. Or if you have the latest NPM, you can just use NPX to run the service. How can you configure everything? Everything is going to be configured on a simple YAML file, where in this case, uh, we are configuring our uh, microservice users, where we are selecting the AWS provider, selecting Node.js as, as a runtime, and you have there your function. Uh, 
the function is what your code is going to be. Um, it's where your code is going to be, and it's going to be triggered by a post event uh, from the endpoint that the user is create. Where here are some similarities with um, with Happy that Pedro just showed, where you have here your handler and your all your code was going. It's going to be here. Uh, in this case, it's specific for for AWS. AWS, you receive an event that will give you the information from the input that you might receive, context that's context that you might manipulate on AWS and callback. It's just to provide an end to, to the execution of your code. So I was thinking on showing a bit, but I'm not sure if I have time. But <laughs> I will give it a try. So I already have serverless installed. Uh, you can use it as serverless or SLS. I prefer SLS just because it's easier. And, oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So you have a lot of commands that you can use. And mainly, what you more interest is just the deploy one because you just simply want to deploy the code. That's what the tool was made up for. And for example, if you want to get started, uh, you can just simply, I don't know, maybe a serverless create, create. And you can have here, for example, select the part that you want and the name of your service, for example. Yeah, so you have your service, let's go there. Uh, and there. And what it, what's going to give us? It's just this: the serverless YAML, the handler, and that's it. You are good to go. You already have a serverless application, mainly set. Doesn't do much right now, and has uh, uh, initial uh, steps here, where here, it's the the, the provider, the default provider of serverless YAML. It's AWS because it's the what support most of the stuff and what's the they initially uh, developed for. And so we can just select the stage that we want. We can just remove it and we can just change to something closer. So this is the AWS region where you can select and you can come here. And yeah, we have the handler already with hello. You can just uncomment this, select something that we might be more interesting. For example, hello. Can you enhance the stage? Uh, okay. And we can come here to our handler and just simply remove this useless stuff and say, hello, barcamp. And yeah, that's it. You have everything done. You can just come here and do a SLS deploy. You can use verbose just to show what's happening. And this is going to take a while. <laughs> so it depends on the network. So let's just go to something else. I had already done before. And we can go to AWS. And here we can see this is uh, the output that's going to give us. It's an endpoint for what we just did. So we can just come here, copy it, go paste it, and yeah, simple. So what happened here? What have we done? Uh, so with that deploy, we just created an API gateway, we created a Lambda with our code, and we have CloudWatch to, to log everything, only with one command on deploy. So. What about other call providers? Is this much different? Actually, no. I just I have it in examples here. So if we see it, we can see that's quite similar. So let's start with we start with AWS. That's the one that we made, and we have web tasks. You can take a look at the the YAML. The YAML is slightly different because. Here we have a different provider, and for different providers, um, besides AWS, we need to provide serverless plugins. Serverless plugins uh, are just 
no, don't. They are just npm package. You j install it like a normal npm, and you just use it uh, uh, with an like a normal package. And the handler, it's quite similar. Uh, it needs to provide different context, uh, di a different way to handle the, the request, but essentially it's quite similar and you can use it the right way. Web tasks uh, only allows uh, one endpoint per, uh, per, per, per lambda. So if we come here, we only have, whoops, wrong one. Uh, work amp. Web tasks. If we, we if we see what's what's there, okay, it needs to check the authentication and then see what's on our configuration. So, if we take a look, it's exactly the same. Not nothing much change. So, if we take a look at Azure, it's kind of the same thing again. <laughs> Uh, but it has some more configuration that normal uh, Azure configuration has. Uh, like it needs to have the Azure settings always. And so that, in that case, we need to add it. And it has the Azure plugin for to execute these functions. And if we go to our handler, it's most likely the same thing. Uh, it has context and will end with context. So the last one is the we are going to see it's a Google one. Oops, sorry. So again, it's kind of the same thing. Google needs some requirements. It's the YAML is slightly the same. And the handler, it's different. <laughs> this one, uh, it's most uh, similar with normal uh, Node.js applications using Express. Um, you can have the request and response, and that's it. You can also add it directly to the, to the handlers, like you were going to do a simple handler on Express and just export it and everything is going to work, I hope. So if we go there to the Google one and just fetch the endpoint, okay. We go and, okay, it didn't work, why? <laughs> Because this, the Google ones only, only give the base part of the URL endpoint. So we, we actually created this endpoint and not the, the base one. So if we go to this one, it gives our, our expected answer. So that's most of it uh, that I want to show you. If you want to learn more about service, you can always check GitHub from Service serv Framework. They have great examples uh, with CloudFront, with web pages uh, with uh, data manipulation that you can use, uh, image, pro image manipulation, and that you can create your functions for. That's it. Thanks. Thanks.